started last week, we started last week, uh, Brother Mears, we started last week a series, it was the introduction series on unshakable. We'll spend the next several weeks um, looking at the life of Daniel, the life of Daniel, a life of a 15-year-old boy who shows an unshakable faith. Now, it's interesting to have unshakable faith when you ain't been shaked. <laughs> I'm going to come over here because y'all didn't get it over here. Anyone can say their faith is unshakable if you ain't been shook. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Now, um, but Daniel had many shakeups in his life. And, 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 and many times uh, from his, the 70 years we look at the book of Daniel, um, you'll see that Daniel has been shaken up many times. And last week we talked about the original shakeup that he was a 15-year-old boy. He was living um, in the land that God had promised. And he was in the presence of great prophets like Isaiah and Ezekiel and Zephaniah and Jeremiah. He, he heard the word of God and, 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 and was really a happy kid at 15. And then all of a sudden war breaks out. The evil uh, empire comes in and conquers them. Not only conquers them, but destroys the temple and takes artifacts from the temple and puts it in his temple. And then he takes 25%. Uh, um, King Nebuchadnezzar takes 25% of the strongest, the smartest, the most beautiful uh, people in the land, boys, men. And he takes them and he wants to indoctrinate them. He wants to change them. He wants to brainwash them and erase everything that they knew of yesterday and create a new tomorrow so that they can be loyal to serve him. Are you all with me? And then, then, and then it's interesting, uh, Byron, we learned last week that, that it was God who allowed this to happen. And we and some of y'all got upset, and I'm going to tell you, when I read that, I'm like, how could a loving God allow something terrible like this to happen in our lives? And, and we know that there were five things. I'll just hit them real quick. If you didn't get them, if you weren't here last week, shame on you. Where were you? And if you um, want to hear, just go back and listen to the message. You can get the CD. You can go online. Um, or you can talk to a friend who was here last week. Who was here last week? Let me see your hand. And you can talk to them. After, have coffee with them, and they'll tell you what we talked about last week. And so just a quick review. We said that God allows things to happen in our lives because there are five things. Anybody remember what those five things are? He does it to inspect us, to correct us, to direct us, to protect us, and to perfect us. Amen. There's some things in us that God is trying to do through us and with us and around us. Are you all with me on that? Uh, and then not only that, not only that is interesting because... Not only did they, were they conquered and taken to a new land, but they gave them new names. And it's interesting, when he gave these four boys new names, um, these names meant something. And it's interesting, because here's what I want you to see. There's, there's power in the name. And I told you all that my mama, my mother who did an outstanding job raising us, outstanding. I mean, and when she needed to be the gentle, loving, and supportive, and Come hug me, she was, and when she needed to be the heavy, and she was the heavy, and she could do all of them well. My mom would even play basketball with us in a dress just to show that, I mean, great. But one thing that my mom told me, and it's the only really thing I could ever uh, say that she was absolutely wrong. She used to say, we would come home, and we'd say, Mama, you know, someone's teasing me, calling me names. And she said, well, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you. And she was wrong because they do hurt. And names do matter. And how we speak to folks has an impact. And it's interesting because it's, it's not only did he take them to a new land, and not only did he destroy the temple and the God in which they served, and not only did he try to change their diet, but he also changed their names, yeah. called them new names. And let me just kind of tell you what, what the meaning of some of the names were of, 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 of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Belteshazzar, these various names. They, the names went from being, uh, Daniel means God is my judge, and then they changed his name to Belteshazzar, which means bow will protect me, saying that, 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 that now you're going to have allegiance to the God of the other world. And, and it says, um, Hananiah means God is gracious, but his name was changed to mean the, 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 the moon God. And then um, uh, Mishael's name used to mean uh, who is like God, and, and they changed his name to the fertility God of that land. And then um, Azariah means that God is my helper, and they changed his name to saying that he's a servant of Nebo. Nebo was a God of that land. In other words, they tried to change the name so that they would change their allegiance, so that every time you would hear the name of their captors, they would begin to identify with their captivity. Are you all with me? And we learn here that, that, 
that, that Daniel was tested. That at age 15, Daniel is taken to a new land. He's given a new name. He's living in new clothes. And, and in the midst of that, they want to give him a new diet. So the first test that, Dave, that Daniel went through was what I call the food test. And I need you to understand that, that uh, before every blessing, there is always a testing. I'm going to say it one more time. You can write that down because that's one of my best lines of the day. Um, I might not get any better than that. I might, I might should just stop now because it don't get much gooder. Now, listen, before every blessing, there is always a testing. Testing equals God strengthening us to build something in us so that we can be prepared for what is coming our way. Does that make sense? I know one day Donovan is going to be driving. I know one day he's 12 years old, and one day he says that he's going to buy. I told you what his car was going to We drive down the street. He says, Daddy, you like that car? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a nice car. He goes, not a Lamborghini. Huh? I know it's not a Lamborghini. He said, I'm going to drive a Lamborghini one day. But if Donovan could afford a Lamborghini today, he ain't ready to drive a Lamborghini today. Come on, somebody. Hey, there are some things that you have to develop and grow before you can handle what power may come your way. That car is too powerful for him at 16, 18, 20. Amen. And, 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 so, and so there's sometimes that God has to, um, God, God tests us with stress before he gives us success. Does that make sense? Amen. So his first test was the food test. And here in, um, in verse number five in chapter one, the king appointed for them a daily ration from the king's choice food. The king's choice food. Underline that the king's choice food. And from the wine which he drank. And appointed that they should be educated three years at the end of which they would enter into the king's personal service. And then it goes on to say in verse 8, but Daniel made up in his mind that he would not defile himself, underline defile, defile himself with the king's choice foods. This is not some junk. This is some high level, you know, this ain't, this ain't McDonald's. This is five guys. I'm just trying to say, man, right? Amen. This is, this is that good stuff, right? And, 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 and and, and, and it says, and with wine that he drank. So he sought permission, underline permission, I'm going to come back to all that stuff, from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. Amen. Today for a few moments we want to talk about when, when you're pressured to conform. When you're pressured to conform. Let's pray. God, open unto us the mysteries of your faith. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, our redeemer, and our friend. We love you, we honor you, and we are available to you. Use us, Lord, that we may see the way and show someone the way. In Christ Jesus' name we pray that all the people say, Amen. Amen. When life tries to conform us to its standards, we must stand firm. You didn't get it. That people are uncomfortable with folks who are different. And so it is our desire, our hope, to try to make them into a form or a shape or to conform them into a standard that makes us comfortable. Are you all with me on that? And I want you to understand that the world will always try to get you to live according to its standards. And I will tell you that here in Southern California, y'all know I got a nickname for Southern California. Um, you know what I call Southern California? The land of the almost. I meet so many folks who were almost famous, almost had a contract, almost. I mean, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, I almost. I'm like, Y'all got some almost stuff. What did you do, though? Amen. Amen. And, 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 and the world wants to force us to be materialistic, to be selfish. And then we have to be able to stand firm, watch this, 
in a world that wants us to be like it. And, and, and we have to stand firm on God's word. And let me just tell you what God wants from us. God wants us to be vessels of God's love, vessels of God's justice, and vessels of God's forgiveness. The world wants us to be selfish and to respond hate with hate, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And God's world, God's word wants us, God's way wants us to be forgiving. Watch this. Um, most people want you to be hateful and mad and angry. Listen to this. If you watch, you know it's true. You, if you like one team, you got to hate the other. Amen? If you are religiously left, you got to hate the religious right. If you are politically right, you got to hate the politically left. Amen? If, if you live uptown, you got to hate the folks that are downtown. I mean, it's, it's, it tells us that we're supposed to hate, and God says we're supposed to love. Yeah. Are you all with me on that? Yeah. So the biblical standards, you know, you all want to get deep and talk about the Ten Commandments and talk about what. The, I'm going to tell you what the Bible is all about. I'm going to break it down for you. It's only three things that God really wants us to do. To love unconditionally. Yeah. To fight for justice for those who are the least, the last, and the left out. And when we blow it, forgive ourselves and forgive others. Yeah. If we can do those three things, we'll be all right. Yeah. I ain't getting nothing but from Lizzie. Lizzie, keep on going because ain't nobody on my street. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. And, and, and so, so, so we must not be self-centered and materialistic and we must follow uh, the, the, the standards of God. And I want you all to know that, that Daniel said that you can change my name, you can change my address, you can change who I work for, you can even tear down my temple, but you will not change my heart. You all with me on that? And then he goes around and then he goes and, and he says, he says, now I want to God, here's what I want you all to see, that he stood on his faith but he did it in a way that was palatable. He, 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 and, 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 and he had four qualities that we see in this illustration. Now, you got to recognize that he could not eat that food. Let me tell you why he couldn't eat that food. Even though it was a choice food, it still wasn't healthy food. Amen? Secondly, um, he was culturally, culturally adverse to that kind of food. Amen? If you've ever traveled overseas in certain places, you go uh, into other um, country, sometimes they tell you you, got, you can't just eat the food right away, you got to ease into it, that your, that, you, that your stomach is not prepared for it, amen, and that you got to stick with stuff you know, and, but, but the biggest thing, the reason he couldn't eat that food, not only was there um, a, a dietary restrictions as it relates to him being kosher and things of that nature, what we call today, and that it wasn't healthy in the first place, but also it was a, a spiritual attack on his faith. That if he was to eat the food of the king, it would externally show folks that he had completely sold out to what was happening to him. It was an external sign that he had lost faith. Thank you. Lizzie, you have to be a little louder because I ain't getting nothing nowhere. I'm just saying. I, I'm just, I'm a, I may have to just, I may have to just preach close to you. Just, just, yeah, because you know what they say, it's hard out here for a preacher. Now, <laughs> here are four qualities. Here's four qualities, real quick, that we learned from the life of Daniel in this first test. You remember, before every blessing, there's a testing. Amen. And so at the end of this test, he gets a blessing, gets a promotion. I want you to know that whenever you pass the test, then you get a promotion from God. Whenever you pass a testing from God, you get a promotion from God. Are you all with me on that? So the first thing it shows that he had integrity. Write it down. He had integrity. Da Daniel never forgot who he was. As I said before, you could change his clothes, his address, his schooling, and his diet, but you cannot change his heart. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells us what? Do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen. And so it is, it is very, very important that we recognize that we have to have integrity. Integrity means that, that we are practicing externally what we believe internally, that our mouth and our actions are in sync. 
Amen? And so that you, you, you can't say that you're a child of God, a God of love, and a God of forgiveness, and a God of justice, and you cussing folks out. Come on, somebody. You cheating folks. All right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look, look, look. look. I'm, I'm going to mess you up. Integrity. Integrity means this in this season, that, um, that you could get away with maybe embellishing a little bit on your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Okay, tax, that's too personal for you all. How many of y'all have, have overstated your resume just a little bit, right? <laughs> you, were, you were shift supervisor and you said you were plant manager, eh? I'm just saying, ain't nobody, ain't nobody ever. Uh, how about we have an interview? They say, uh, tell us some of your uh, strengths. You give your strengths. Tell us some of your weaknesses. You know, I don't really. And then you say, my weaknesses, I'm so dedicated. I don't know when to go home. <laughs> Let the church say, ouch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen, amen. That's my weakness. I'm so dedicated. I just, I just love what I do. That's my weakness. <laughs> I, can't, I have my weakness. I can't stop. I can't help but to earn the company more money. That's my weakness. <laughs> so what is integrity? Amen. It showed that he had integrity. That he wasn't going to. And at 15, he wasn't going to let the pressures of the world the pressures of the most powerful man on the planet stop him from being who he is. Can I just pause for a moment? This is important. And I don't know if I'm going to finish this message. I may have to pick it up next week, but I think this is important. The biggest challenge to the faith sharing of Christians is our authentic expression of who we really are. We are saved. We do have power. We are more than conquerors. But sometimes we get messy. And sometimes we blow it. And sometimes we get sad. And sometimes we gossip. And sometimes we lie. And sometimes we cheat. And sometimes we cheat. We steal. But God is still working with us. And when we try to pretend we serve a perfect, uh, we serve a perfect God and we're his perfect people, we are lying to others. And there's nothing more valuable than you being authentically who you are. Does that make sense? That's a side note. I'm going to try to stay focused now. So one is integrity. Two is he showed discipline. Daniel controlled his ego and he controlled his appetite. Listen, he says he, says he controlled his ego and he controlled his appetite. In, in verse 8, he, he humbly came to him and he, he asked him very politely, he says, you know, hey, you know, um, sir, um, 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 I, I, I could go off because I don't eat this stuff, but he was like, um, um, I just, I can't do this. Um, um, and, 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 I, and I need to know that um, even though I'm facing the most powerful man on the planet, and even though you have these rules for me, he says, how about this? How about we try it for a little while? Yeah. How about um, you allow me to try it for 10 days because you want me to be strong, and I want to be strong, and I think I can be strong by eating the way I eat. And if you would allow me to eat that way in 10 days, if I'm not as strong as you think, then I'll go back to your way. In other words, he didn't sell out because everyone else around him was eating. You got to recognize there were thousands of other young men his age that got, came from the same place he came from and started doing what everybody else was doing. But he stayed disciplined to his faith. Write this down. Just because you're able to do it don't mean you need to do it. Just because everybody else is doing it don't mean you should do it. Y'all with me on that? Amen. 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 I, 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 re I remember um, what it tells us in Romans 6 and 13. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourself completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. 
So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, I wish Larry was here. Um, I don't know if I should tell this story, but Tanisha's like, don't tell it. If you have to ask the question, Lisa said, tell it. If you want an amen from me, tell the story. Um, um, so this was several years ago, and Tanisha knows this story. I was, I was with Larry just a few, a few months ago. Uh, a few weeks ago, Larry and I were in L.A. at a funeral, and I ran into a guy who comes up to me and says, Pitts, what's up? Man, I'm like, hi. I didn't recognize him. He said, you don't remember me? I said, no. He's like the club. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't go, even in college, I didn't go to the club. I'm like, the club? I said, I wasn't in the club. He goes, remember Barbados? For, I was like, oh, yeah, I do remember. Oh, my gosh. And, and he's right. I was in the club as a pastor in a club. Um, and there were women in the club. And, 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 and it's true. And so it was a group of us who after the wedding, they said, we're going to go into town and we're going to um, just kind of let our hair down a little bit. And, like, and, I, and I was trying not to be, this is the honest to God truth, I was trying not to be this stick in the mud. I was with my friends, you know, they were like, come on, pastor, you can, you can get your hair down a little bit. You pastor, pastor, we're pastor. <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I get to the club, man, the music was loud, and, and the girls that had hardly no clothes on, and they shaking stuff, I didn't know it could shake, and, and I'm trying not to be a stick in mud, and I paid $10 to go in this club. <laughs> and anybody who knows me, I am incredibly cheap. And now I'm mad because the value proposition just wasn't there. I spent $11 too much. And so to, my wife would tell you, I'm out at the club, out front, on the phone. My wife, I'm like, babe, I'm at the club. She's like, at the club? You don't go to I said, no, I don't go to the club. I said, but I'm here today. She said, why? Because I said, I'm trying to try not to be so passionate. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, trying to be with my boys. She said, that's interesting. <laughs> and so I ended up catching the taxi back and mad because I lost my ten dollars. Mad. I'm, I still think about that. That was like nine years ago. I still think about that ten dollars. <laughs> Serious. If anybody want to give me ten, I might feel a little better. But. Wasn't disciplined enough to say no? Trying to be like the crowd? Trying to prove to my friends I ain't changed? How stupid is that? <laughs> you bragging about a God who can change and transform. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and you trying to fight against the folks that you ain't changed. Yeah. Who else is as stupid as I am? And a 15-year-old boy is telling me that I ain't got it. And I ain't seen that guy in 10 years, and I see him at a funeral. He goes, remember me from the club? I'm like, no. <laughs> Baby, and I told you, and she was like, you didn't need to go home. I said, if I go home, they're going to think I'm a punk. She's like, whatever. All right, let's move on. Discipline. Discipline to stand, the integrity to stand for what you believe. Even when the world wants you to conform. Y'all with me on that? Because he says, he says, he says, he says, I'll be polluted. He says defiled. The word defiled means to be polluted or contaminated, a loss of purity. My witness was wrecked, but my inability to be disciplined in what I believe. Don't judge me. Amen. The next thing that's marked by his life, not only integrity, not only discipline, but we also see that he was marked by courage. Daniel was willing to stand alone. There were thousands upon thousands of young people. But Exodus 23 and 2 tells us, never follow the crowd in doing what is wrong. And don't be swayed in your testimony by the mood of the majority. We know that the majority is often wrong. The majority said, crucify him. Come on, somebody. 
that we know that obviously, oftentimes the minority opinion is the right opinion. Amen? Amen? How many of you all can call folks, you can get a majority opinion to do something that you know is wrong? How many of y'all know exactly who to call to support your minority, your, 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 come on, your opinion of wrongness? Amen, 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 all right. But I want you to know in God's word, right is always right. And let me tell you the three rights that are always right. One is always right to love. Two is always right to fight for injustice. And three is always right to forgive. That doesn't change. Injustice where there's inequality to fight for equality. Injustice, where someone is being treated wrong, you stand up in, in, in the way in which you can to make a difference for that person. Does that make sense? Amen. Right is always right. Let me, let me, let me move on. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13 says, Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, and be strong. He told Joshua um, six times in the first chapter of the book of Joshua, he says, Only be strong and what? courageous. We need people who are going to be courageous enough to stand against the powers that be. Amen? Amen. And then lastly, he had this incredible humility. Daniel was tactful uh, or respectful with authority. You know, some of us, have anybody, you ever heard the saying, some people can be strong and wrong? Amen. Amen. Or some people can be right, but you're so strong that you're wrong. There are some folks who are right in what they're standing for and right what they're saying, but their attitude makes it wrong. We're disrespectful when we challenge the authorities. And I need you all to hear this. When you challenge the authorities, when you stand up for righteousness, it does not necessarily mean you got to front somebody and cuss someone out and stand on their desk and tell them wrong. Sometimes catching them in the parking lot and inviting them for a cup of coffee. And saying, hey, this is what I saw, and this is how I feel. Help me understand how that's in line with our values and our goals. The right time, the right attitude, and dealing with the truth. Humility doesn't get puffed up when you're right. Humility means that you see what is right. And you humble yourself, you lower yourself in a position that you can be heard. Can I give you an example? Um, um, you know, I talk about my family a lot, and, and I talk about my issues, and, and y'all probably be looking at teeth like, how could you even deal with this? I don't know how she deal with me. I'll tell you, I wouldn't deal with myself. Praise God. But, but, but my, um, my uh, mentor, you all met him, uh, Dr. Calvin Morris. When we first got married, I was so excited. I, I ran, and, and, you know, um, and, and Tanisha was one of the first people. She met, he met when we got uh, to Atlanta, we moved to Atlanta, and, and he, he just observed, and um, he, he's in his mid-80s now, and he, he just observed her, and he observed me and my interaction, and he says something to me. He says, um, he says she looks up to you. She admires your strength and your, and your, um, your gregarious and charismatic uh, way. He says, but the problem is, if you got to make sure you hear her. You got to make sure you listen to her. She's not going to out-shout you. She's never going to out-debate you. She said, he said, but if you don't humble yourself and listen to her, you're going to lose her. Listen. And he told me to do something. He says, whenever you have to have a conversation with her, that's tough. So I want you to do a couple things. He says, I want you to always lower your voice. Because you loud. Yo, mom, no, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said this. He said, wherever she is, make sure you're lower than her. So if she's sitting on the chair, you sit on the floor. <laughs> and you whisper so that. <laughs> Look now. <laughs> Because it's just as important to hear someone. It's more important to hear someone than to just share and to be right. He showed us at 15 that he still respected authority while he was challenging authority. You didn't get it. Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to stop here and give you some last principles and then I'm going to... Um, 
going to take my seat. Um, and here's what I want you to understand. And I think that this is, this is important. Uh, and if you're in a small group, we have small group books, and you'll get some of this. You'll get the rest of it in chapter one. Some of you have already done that. But let me give you some principles real quick, um, and, I'll, and I'll take my seat um, so that we can have communion. What gave Daniel the strength to be able to do what he did at 15? And I'm going to give you those real quick, and then I'll take my seat. Is that all right? What gave Daniel the strength to do what Daniel did at 15? Can, can I pause for a moment? How many 15-year-olds had that much integrity? Do you know? Man, we heard about some 15-year-olds that had that much integrity on Thursday. But, 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 but imagine his parents are not mentioned at all in the Bible. But what a wonderful job they must have done because he was taken from his parents, never saw his parents again in his life. And how many of us can trust our 15-year-old with great responsibility outside of our presence? Does that make sense? And, 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 and let me tell you why he was able to do this. Because he had and lived in close relationship with God. He had a genuine walk with the Lord. Listen, his presence, the God's presence was in his life. God's promises were in his heart. God's power was in his spirit. God's, uh, God was all around him. People were around him. And God's protection followed him. And the only way we can live a life of integrity and of courage and of humility is that we recognize that we have Jesus with us and we will never be alone. Amen. We have to recognize that the Holy Spirit is in me or in us. We have to stand on the promises of God that are with me. And then finally, it says that people were all around him, that he had a group of praying folks around him. God's family surrounds me. Listen, he had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that there were thousands that stood in a line with Nebuchadnezzar, but he had a few good praying saints around him. And I want you all to know that's why you must be in a small group. The small groups having a few folks standing with you and praying with you and, 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 and praising with you and worshiping with you. And that's why you have to have a church home. You cannot live in this world that wants you to conform all by yourself. I had a conversation with a young lady who wants to, um, who's laying a foundation for singles ministry um, in our church and and I, and I'm, I support it, and, and, and she wanted to make sure that I understood. She said, Pastor, you got to recognize something, that, that I have to stand and surround myself with single folks who, who recognize the issues that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. And I'm like, well, you know, as a pastor, you know, I preach the whole counsel of God's word. She said, Negro, you've been married for 22 years. You don't know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> you don't know the pressure to conform that I got to deal with. And I was like, oh. I need to be surrounded with some folks who are praying, who have the same pressures that I have, who can relate to where I am, so that I can walk the walk that I say that I'm going to walk. Y'all with me on that? And so God says, I want you to be members of my family. Those who are outside, I invite you in. And that you can stand in the midst of the fire. If you got a few good friends who are standing with you.